Hi friends, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Here's what we're discussing today. I have to start this video with a bit of an apology. One of the things that I try to do is I try very hard to keep the language on the channel clean, but of course I can't have any control over what people actually testify to. So I'm left with a choice between getting my channel demonetized or taking some action to remove content that is offensive to many people. So in this video, there will be a section of audio where I will mute the actual words. You can go back on Court TV's website or one of the other websites that has this and play it for yourself if you want to hear... Uh, basically blasphemous and uh, profane sp speaking, but I don't think you probably want to, but I point that out just by virtue of being clear about what I did, because I did lower the volume at, the, at those two points in this video. And I do that, again, because advertisers don't like to hear that, and I also know that most of you don't like to hear that. So one of the things that I learned in healthcare early on is that um, you can't account for all of the many ways that people hurt each other. Most of it doesn't make sense. You, you, you wind up in the emergency room and you're taking care of somebody who had his nose and jaw broken in a fist fight in a bar because he said something unkind about a woman and that woman's husband pummeled him into the dirt. It doesn't make any sense, and it's ridiculous that people do that, but people do exactly that. Rage, particularly among young men, also manifests itself many times in dealing with children. And that's because children don't respond always to things like stop, quit, don't, leave it alone. Instead, they push boundaries. That's what all children do. And it doesn't make sense to get wildly enraged by that, but there are people who do. So today we're talking about Adam Montgomery's trial and the initial witnesses in that trial. And as I've said before, in a criminal trial, the first thing you want to do for the purpose of the trial is to bring the victim back to life. You bring people who knew the victim, and they talk about what a wonderful person that person was. What kind of child was Harmony Montgomery? <laughs> she was a loving child. She was very sweet, very happy. Um, she loved, she was super social. She loved to be with people. We used to joke around with her to leave a sparkle wherever she went, because wherever she went, she left people happy, and you knew that you met her. Now, this was a foster mom who took care of Harmony, and as we'll find out here in a second, numerous times. And that was because apparently the state kept pulling her away from her mom's care. Let's listen. How long was Harmony in your care for? <laughs> so, which time? We, we took care of Harmony three times. She came back into care three times. So for the first time, she was with us for about two months. Then she returned to her mother, and then she returned to us. And then she stayed with us for about a little over two and a half years, and then she went back with her mother and then came back ten months later. You mentioned these disabilities. Yes. Was Harmony developmentally delayed? She was not. It definitely could have been a possibility. She started off with that original diagnosis, and through going through testing, she had a neurologist, endocrinologist, ophthalmologist, and we had a whole team of specialists that worked with her, and they changed the diagnosis with, to septo-optic septo dysplasia. And were you taking any, any steps when she was in your care to, to treat her needs? Yeah, absolutely. Harmony had, like I said, a team of doctors, but she also had early intervention workers. So she had two. She had a nurse that came weekly, and she had um, she had a vision specialist that came weekly, and we did all the treatments and the programs that she needed with that. Now, shortly after putting up this witness, who is the foster mom, they go to the biological mother of Harmony Montgomery. And what's interesting about it is 
both the scope of the rather limited examination this witness has, as well as the uh, cross-examination, which is done by the female on the defense team. Let's watch. And how far did you go in school? Um, I didn't graduate high school. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask you about a specific day, June 7th, 2014. What significance, if any, does that day have for you? <laughs> it was the day my, my daughter Harmony was born. And Harmony was a girl, correct? Yes. Okay. Have you had any other daughters besides Harmony? No. Again, I only have a couple of questions. And it sounds like Harmony was a lovely child and a joy, is that right? Yes. And um, you described on direct uh, her uh, getting potty trained and you comparing her to her brother? Yeah. Your son? Yes. And uh, I think she loved being uh, a big sister to her brother, your son. Yes. Right? And um, you described how old Harmony was in September of 2018, I think. Harmony was not living with you at that time. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Thank you. Harmony's mom was a very sympathetic witness, but you also have to realize that she had multiple problems in terms of dealing with her child, and that's why Adam Montgomery wound up with sole physical custody of the child. So, again, that doesn't seem like a very rational view in hindsight, but we'll never know what would have happened if she was left in the mom's care. Then... The very next person that they call is Adam Montgomery's uncle. Now, Adam Montgomery's uncle, a family member, you would expect his sympathies to lie with his nephew. But it does not appear that that's the case. But I want you to watch this person's affect as they testify, because it is illuminative in that he doesn't want to be there, I'm not certain that he hasn't taken something to sort of diminish his anguish, maybe Valium or Xanax or something like that, because his speech is very slow. He is clearly distressed up there talking, and, well, this is what he says. Thank you. You will please go ahead and state your full name and spell out both your first and your last name for the record. Kevin Lester Montgomery. K-E-V-I-N-M-O-N-T-G-O-M-E-R-Y. Okay. And Mr. Montgomery, uh, what town are you living in now? Malden, Mass. Okay. How long have you lived down there? I've been back in the area since June. June of this year? Last year. June of last Wait, year. 23. Of course. Sorry. Um, and are you currently working? I am. What do you do for work? Uh, I am a plumber. And uh, how far did you go in school? Tenth grade. How long have you been a plumber? Um, roughly three and a half years-ish. What are the, some of the other kind of jobs that you had before being a plumber? Um, landscaping. Um, I was in the drywall um, union, um, roofing. Okay. Stuff like that. Um, I'd like to ask, in 2019, um, where were you living at the first part of 2019? 2019, first part of 2019, I was living in Manchester. And what was the street address that you were living at? 77 Guilford Street. Who owned that home? Excuse me? Who owned that home? Sorry. My mom and my, um, my ex. And who else lived there? Um, let me ask, uh, let's say in February or Mar March of 2019, who else lived there? Um, so it was me, 
my nephew, his wife, <coughs> and their kids. I'm not really sure if he is taking so long in this regard, just trying to make sure that he has the facts right, or if he is not in some way sort of mentally slowed down here, uh, either chemically or just naturally. It's difficult to tell. Uh, but you can certainly see that it's taking him a while to get the testimony in. Will He continues on in the same vein. He talked about his nephew. Now we're going to find out who his nephew is. And who's your nephew, sir? Adam Montgomery. And who was his wife at the time? Kayla Montgomery. So let me try to get your testimony right that this was Harmony's room. Is that right? Yes. Let me ask you, when you got home, did you see Harmony there? I did. Where did you see her? I see her standing in the kitchen. And when you saw her in the kitchen, how did she look to you? She had a black eye. Can you describe it for us? How did the black eye look? Um, full, like a, a raccoon's eye. Black and blue. Black and blue? Yes. And when you say full, what do you mean by full? Can you give us a good All example? the way around. All the way around. And I see just there you were pointing to your right eye. Did you see it on her right eye? I honestly can't recall, but I think the left. Okay, you think the left. Okay. I appreciate that for your honesty there. So when you saw her in the kitchen with this black eye, uh, what, if anything, did you say? It's okay, take your time. Something along the words of, oh my God, what did you do, Harmony? And did, who answered that question? My nephew, Adam. Where was he? Standing he... right behind her. And what did Adam say? She didn't do anything. I bashed her around the house. Well, that was heartrending testimony. And now we have established that out of the defendant's own mouth, he has testified, or he has told people that he has harmed his child. And you might be wondering why that isn't barred by the hearsay rule, because hearsay is an out-of-court statement repeated for the truth of of the statement itself. The reason it's not hearsay is that it is an admission by the party opponent or the defendant in a criminal case. And as a result, it comes out from the rule under the uh, hearsay rule in pretty much every state in the union. And, and it's a good rule because otherwise you might not be able to get in testimony and admissions that the defendant himself or herself has made. That was awful testimony, and I am pretty sure that this is going to be hard for the defense to overcome. And ultimately, we'll see where that goes. But this first portion, these first few witnesses, certainly set a stage for a trial that will show, um, well, I'll put it this way, it will not show the very best of Adam Montgomery's character. And in many respects, I feel sorry for Adam Montgomery. 
not in the way you're thinking, but in, in this way. Most abusers were themselves abused. Now, that doesn't excuse it, right? It doesn't make it right to pass on the abuse that you received as a child. But in some ways, it makes it understandable where you would have a problem dealing with your own rage because someone else taught you that the way that you deal with your own rage is to strike out and hit someone defenseless. This is an awful case, and I, I, I don't have any clue where it's going at this point, but if it continues in this vein, I, I would think that the defense is going to have a really difficult time selling their theory of what happened to Harmony Montgomery. That's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have the opportunity today, do something kind for someone. It will make you feel great. Oh, and then there's this little thing. I try very hard not to be like all those other YouTubers who open up every video by asking you to subscribe before you've even seen the content. But now that you've gone a few minutes into the content, if you find this interesting and helpful, please subscribe. I'd consider it a personal favor. Well, like I said, that's what I have for you. Thank you so much for watching, and again, catch me down here at the beach again next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.